Hi there, this is Mr. Alexander, and I am here today to talk to you about the Unit 5 test review. So let's jump right into it. First question says, factor x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 20. Um, first thing you should always do when you're factoring is take out the greatest common factor. And right here, I'm not seeing a greatest common factor other than 1. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this box here. Draw myself the box, and I like to write the terms directly into the box. x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 20. And once you've written the terms into the box, ask yourself the question, what do these two terms have in common? Well, it looks like they both have an x. What do these two terms have in common? They both share a positive 5. What do these two terms share? That appears to be an x squared. And what do these two ter terms have in common? A negative 4. So I can rewrite this original uh, polynomial as x plus 5 times x squared minus 4. But I'm not done factoring it because you need to recognize this as the difference of two squares. The square root of x squared is x, the square root of 4 is 2. So I can keep the x plus 5 and rewrite this guy as x to x plus and minus 2. Now it didn't say solve, it just said factor. So at this point we're done. If it had said solve, we would set each of these equal to 0 and solve from there. Okay, next one says factor 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 3x minus 12. First step when you're factoring is always take out the greatest common factor. Um, I don't see a greatest common factor other than 1 here because that's a 2 and that's a 3. So again, we're going to jump right into the box. And we're going to write our terms directly in there. 2x cubed minus 8x squared <clears throat> plus 3x minus 12. What do these have in common? Well, that's just an x. These ones have a negative 4 in common. These guys have a 2x squared, and these guys have a 3, positive 3. So it looks like when I factor this thing, I'm going to get x minus 4, 2x cubed or squared plus 3. And the question is, can I factor this thing further? The answer is no. Um, it's not the difference of squares, because it's a plus sign, not a minus sign. And uh, it doesn't look like there's anything else I can do with it. So we're going to call it good. That thing is fully factored. And that happens on occasion. That's OK. All right. Factor x cubed minus 343. Uh, you're supposed to recognize this as the sum and difference of cubes because x times x times x is x cubed, and 7 times 7 times 7 is 343. So you can rewrite this thing as in parentheses x cubed minus in parentheses 7 cubed. So this is the difference of cubes, and the formula, when you factor that, is a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. The way I knew the signs there is, you can remember the acronym SOAP, same sign, opposite sign, always positive. So this x is my a value, the 7 is my b value, I'm just going to plug into this formula here to get x minus 7 times x squared plus 7x plus 49. And um, whenever you're doing the sum and difference of cubes, you'll know you've done it right because you've got uh, one linear factor and one quadratic, and the linear is always going to have a real solution, and this quadratic will always have two complex solutions, so we can't factor it any further. If you were to graph this thing, you'd see it never crosses the x-axis. 
uh, which means it has two complex solutions. So at this point, we're done. We're done factoring that thing. And you're going to always recognize the sum and difference of cubes first by the fact that it has two terms. It's a binomial. Now you'll notice this next one is a trinomial. So we're going to have to factor it a different way. Factor 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 16x. The first thing you've got to do is take out the greatest common factor, which in this case is 2 and x. So we've got a 2x on the outside of the parentheses there. When you divide each of these terms by 2x, you're going to be left with x squared plus 2x minus 8. And when you get here, you're going to want to ask yourself, hmm, I've got a quadratic. Can I factor that further? And the first question I'm always asking myself is, are there two, question, are there two numbers that multiply to negative 8 but also add to positive 2? Multiply to negative 8, add to positive 2. The answer is yes. Uh, positive 4 and negative 2 will add, add to 2 and multiply to negative 8. So I can factor this thing a little bit further and say, okay, x plus 4, x minus 2. And at this point, if it, was, if it had set solve, then I would set each of the factors equal to 0. But it didn't, so we're done. This is the final answer. Okay, uh, looks to be the last factoring question, number 5 here. Factor 8x cubed minus 125. Uh, again, you're supposed to recognize this thing as the difference of cubes because I can rewrite this thing as 2x in parentheses cubed, because 2 cubed is 8, minus in parentheses 5 cubed. So I'm going to use the same formula as before, a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So my a is 2x, my b is 5. I'm going to rewrite this as 2x minus 5 times 4x squared, because 2x squared, 2, ti 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2x times 5 is 10x, plus 25. And that's the fully factored form. Moving on to number 6. Very similar to the first 5, except now we're adding the extra step of solving which means when I'm done factoring everything, I'm going to set everything equal to 0 to solve for x. So, uh, to factor this thing, remember, always take out the greatest common factor, which we've already done. So, let's start by putting this thing in the box. x cubed minus 5x squared, 4x minus 20, there's no greatest common factor, so we're in the box, we're asking ourselves four questions. What do these two have in common? It's just an x. What do these two have in common? Minus 5. What do these two have in common? That'd be an x squared. What do these two have in common? That would be a positive 4. Right? So we've got these factors, x minus 5 and x squared plus 4 equals 0. And whenever you've got this thing factored, all you've got to do is take those two factors and set them individually equal to 0, which I'm going to do. So to solve this thing, you add 5 to both sides and get x equals positive 5. That's one of the solutions. Uh, to solve this thing, subtract the 4, get x squared equals negative 4. And then you're going to want to take the square root of both sides. So you're going to get x equals positive negative square root of negative 4. Remember, whenever you take the square root of a negative number, there's going to be an i in the answer. The square root of 4 is 2. So that means that x equals positive and negative 2i. So this thing has three solutions. x equals 5 and x equals positive and negative 2i. All right. Number 7. Solve x to the 4th plus 3x cubed minus 9x squared minus 27x. 
This one does have a greatest common factor. It's just x. I need to take it out. x times x to the third plus 3x squared minus 9x minus 27 equals 0. This term in here, this cubic, we're going to want to put that in the box to solve it. And we've got x cubed, 3x squared minus 9x minus 27. We've got an x up here. We've got a positive 3. We've got an x squared and a negative 9. So when I rewrite this thing, I've got x times x plus 3 times x squared minus 9 equals 0. Well, recognize this is the difference of two squares. You can factor that a little bit further and rewrite it as x times x plus 3, x, x minus 3, x plus 3 equals 0. Well, notice that I've got two x plus 3's here, so I can rewrite it again as x times x plus 3 squared x minus 3. Uh, even though this is squared, we can still set it equal to 0. And we can just say x equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. So this one's only going to have three solutions. x equals 0, negative 3, and positive 3. You don't need to write the negative 3 twice. Just write it one time. Uh, number eight is probably the easiest question on the review here because it's already factored and it says solve. So you just need to take each of these factors, set them equal to zero. A lot of people would try and multiply this out to get some nasty looking cubic and try to solve it from there. I don't recommend that. Just set them equal to zero, each of the factors, and be done with it. So, x equals 0, positive 3, and negative 2. Easiest question on the review. Right, let's do number 9. The volume of a cube can be modeled by the equation s cubed minus 125 equals 0. What is the length of one side of the cube? Okay, so we've got s cubed minus 125 equals 0. Now, the side of the cube that I'm interested in is that s right there. So essentially I'm trying to get s by itself. So if I add 125 to one side, then I've gotten a good start. To get rid of this cube here, you just take the cube root of both sides. So what I'm left with is s equals 5. And that's a pretty easy question too, if you know what they're asking you to do. Another way you could do this is you could recognize this as the difference of two cubes, essentially the problem we did right next door. And you'd end up with it factored like this, but one of your factors over here would be s minus 5, because the cube root of 125 is 5, and you would solve that one. You'd end up with another factor like this that would result in two complex solutions. Well, it's a side of a cube, so we know that it doesn't have complex side length. That doesn't make any sense. So if you had factored it, you would have just dealt with the real solution, and you would have ignored the other factor. Okay, that was page one of the unit five test review. I'm going to do page two on the next video. Thanks for watching.